are you pulling weeds? Not in the garden club? It's about spring. It's true. Time for uh, planting. We get the garden ready. We're going to have to figure out like how much space is here before we get... Yeah, so we need to figure out how many plants, so we need to know the area. No, no, we need to know the perimeter. No. The perimeter. We need to know the, the area. Perimeter. The perimeter. Area. Hey guys, it's Miss Hampton. Uh, we're gonna be taking notes today on perimeter and area. This is something you should be very familiar with. Uh, we will start with perimeter. So I'll write that at the top, sometimes abbreviated with P. Um, this is gonna be the distance around the outside of a shape. So let's get that definition down. The distance around the outside of a shape. Okay, let's just do uh, two little examples here. The first one is going to be a rectangle. That is our go-to shape. So you had a rectangle. Um, and that rectangle had two side lengths labeled. It might be eight units and uh, five units on the other side. The way that we would find the distance around um, like it says on the back of your formula chart, would be to um, take two lengths and two widths and add them together. So if these were your lengths, eight, we would take two of them. So eight plus eight, and then two widths, five and a five, and add all of those together. It might even help you to kind of do this business where you label the other sides like you did in elementary school. All we want to know is the distance around. We add all of those up and get our perimeter. Um, we're also going to put down your formula here is to take two lengths. That's an L, not a one. And two widths. Add them together and that gets you your perimeter. It gets a little bit uh, different though if you have an irregular shape. You can't just take two lengths and two widths and add them together. Let's say we had a funky shape like this. big block L and it had all of its sides labeled so maybe it said three units but this side was four units this one's one not to scale and this side was two units four units and six units uh, the way that we would find that just kind of add up all of the sides so another way that you could do it is just to add up all sides so in this case it'd be three plus four plus one plus two plus four, plus six. It may help you to kind of check off or cross off the sides or the numbers as you go around to make sure that you get all of them and that would equal your perimeter. Okay, area. Split our page in half here. Sometimes abbreviated with capital A. This is gonna be the number of square units inside of a shape. The number. of square units inside the shape. Okay, let's go back to our rectangle for the first one. Use the same rectangle we did before that has a side length labeled eight units and the other side length labeled five units. This time we're looking for the number of squares that can fit inside of it. So if you actually took the time to draw it out, you'd have eight units across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and five units going down. One, two, three, four, five. If you were to take all the time to count up all those teeny tiny squares, you, it would get you the area, which in this case is 40. But there is a shortcut, like it tells you on your formula chart, that the area, different color here, equals the base times the height. It's also important to note that this is a lowercase b. We're gonna use uppercase b later for something else, so make sure you always use a lowercase b when you're talking about um, the base of a rectangle. So base times height, uh, that would be eight times five in this case. 
it gives you the same area of 40 that you would get if you counted up all the squares. All right, what about an irregular shape? That's where it gets a little bit weird. It's kind of taking upside down L this time. All right, let's say we wanted to find uh, the area of this one. If I had my side lengths labeled, let's say the side length was six, this one's three, uh, this one is, hmm, how about another, how about four, and then this one is two. <clears throat> okay, let's say I had this irregular shape, all the little side lengths are labeled, I don't know how I would find exactly the number of squares inside without drawing them. Um, these can get big enough that it would be not reasonable to draw them. So what we want to do is turn it into rectangles. So I could draw a little imaginary line right here and just pretend that this was two rectangles that I can find the area of. In this case, I'd have base times height. That would be 6 times 3. And that gives me 18. So the area of just this section is 18. And then the area of this section is base 2 times height 4 gives me an area of 8. If I know the area of both parts, then I know the area of the entire thing if I take the parts and put them together. So the area of this entire thing would be 18 plus 8, 26. All right. What you're going to try on your left side, I'm going to give you um, two irregular shapes, I want, you, I want you to find, actually I'm just going to give you one irregular shape. Um, and you can take and find the perimeter by adding up all of the sides all the way around and find the area by turning it into rectangles and adding it up. All right. I'll give you another L. All right, I'm going to give you four, three, eight and five. So you've got a couple of missing sides. Take it as a challenge, see if you can figure out what they're supposed to be. And then you want to find the area all the way around and, or I'm sorry, the perimeter all the way around and the area of the two rectangles. Good luck. No! Perimeter! We need to know the area! Perimeter! Okay, can't go around again, it's really muddy. <laughs>